<laughs> welcome to Mondays with Mira, uh, where we're going to do first seduction, then deconstruction. You're going to learn all sorts of things today, and we're going to look at a really fabulous book by Dashka Slater, and illustrated by one of my favorites, here we go, uh, Nicoletta Ciccioli. She's awesome. Uh, I'm going to give you a quick peek at another book illustrated by her. And I think what, what I'm going to do at some point is do a special session on Nicoletta Ciccioli because her work is so spectacular. Okay, so right now let's settle down, relax, take a deep breath, take a minute, and I'm going to read a wonderful story to you. Dashka is really awesome. She and I presented together one time, well, separately, but at the same event, and she was just hilarious. So I'll give you a link to her site at the end. And it's called Firefighters in the Dark. And this is what you'd call a postmodern picture book, and I'll tell you about that later on, what that means. The fire station is near my house. At night, I can hear the sirens howling. I'm in my bed and my eyes are closed, but I listen and I know where they are going. Tonight, there's a castle on fire. The knights are running around like crazy and the king and the queen and the 15 little princesses are all screaming, help firefighters, help. What happened was this. A fire-breathing dragon stopped in for dinner and his potatoes were too hot. He blew on them to cool them off and set the table on fire. Luckily, the firefighters are close by. They chop down the roof of the castle with their axes and the pumper truck pumps water from the moat. Pretty soon, the fire is out. The 15 baby princesses go back to playing hide and seek and the knights go riding off on their horses to tell the dragon that next time it can only have cold things to eat, like popsicles. It's quiet now. I hear the fire trucks come back to the station. The firefighters are getting out and taking off their boots. I love the firefighters. Their names are King, Penelope, Almondine and Bruce. They can carry heavy hoses and ladders because they're as strong as tigers. They have yellow and black boots with black turnout coats and, and pants with yellow stripes. And they have helmets with visors they put down so smoke doesn't get in their eyes. They're not afraid of anything. When they get back to the fire station, they're very dirty from all the ash and they have to take a bath. But as soon as they're in their tubs playing with bubbles, the alarm will ring again and they'll have to slide down the fire pole, still wet from their bath. Listen, did you hear that? I think I hear the sirens again, howling and howling. The dog down the street is howling too. The sirens sound far away this time. That's because the fire is all the way in Mexico. <laughs> what happened was this. There's a garden there full of chili peppers, so hot that when you take a bite, with a bite, your mouth feels like it's on fire. Well, there was a lady in her garden planting poppies and she felt a little hungry, so she nibbled on a pepper. It was so hot, sparks flew from her tongue. The firefighters have to come and spray her face with water. Then they take their rakes and their shovels and make up, rake up all the burning embers that fell out of her mouth. Those embers are fire seeds and they grow into fire flowers, but the firefighters spray them with water until they disappear. The lady's so grateful. She gives them some poppies and zucchinis to take home. Almondine loves zucchini and Bruce likes bananas. Penelope eats only peas, pasta and pickles. King likes vegetables, so he's really strong. But toast is his favorite with lots of jam. They'll be having breakfast soon after they sleep. Maybe I'll go and visit them in the morning. Once they give me a hat and a sticky badge and King, once they gave me, sorry, 
They'll be having breakfast soon after they sleep. Maybe I'll go and visit them in the morning. Once they gave me a hat and a sticky badge, and King let me sit in the back. Another time when I was sleeping, I heard their sirens, but it wasn't a fire. What happened was this. There was a little boy who was bouncing on his bed, bouncing and bouncing. He bounced so high he flew through the ceiling and into the sky. He was floating up with the stars saying, look at me. And his papa was saying, come down here right now, it's time for bed. So the firefighters came with their aerial ladder truck. The ladder went up and up, past the moon and Mars and Venus, up to Pluto, where the boy was floating. The boy said, did you see how high I jumped? And Almondine said, you can't be up on Pluto in pajamas. You need a spacesuit and some mittens. And so she carried him down the ladder and back to bed. Sometimes at night when I shut my eyes, I can hear the fire engine outside my window. Its motor goes purr, purr, like a big red cat. And King stretches, stretches the ladder to my bed. Come out, he says, come out and ride. The stars are too hot tonight. We have to cool them down. So we climb into the truck and drive into the sky. Me, King, Penelope, Almondine and Bruce. The clouds are full of water and we put them in our hoses and spray away the fires in the stars. The end. Wasn't that just gorgeous? And so I'm going to speak a little bit about postmodernism and why this is a postmodern book. This is a postmodern book because it um, essentially has an unreliable narrator. It, you don't know what's, it's uh, ambiguous, so things are open to interpretation. Uh, often postmodernism has irony, and this is not an ironic book. This is a very sort of incredibly sweet, fun, heartfelt book. But it takes you on all these multiple paths that you don't expect to go. And that's also a sign of postmodernism, where it just kind of messes with your head. It's not a straight, linear narrative. It just goes all over the place. There are multiple narratives that, that all happen. Um, often that will happen with multiple narrators, or it might feature an un unreliable narrator. And in this book, we definitely have an unreliable narrator. That is the little girl who's the main character. And she... Um, you know, we start off, we think it's going to be a regular fire fighter story. She lives near the fire house, the firehouse. She hears the firehouse um, alarms going. Except, we go to a castle. And we're not expecting that. We don't think we're going to go to a castle. And time after time, we go to all these weird and wacky places. And it's really, I think it's a another brilliant book and I'm going to mostly try and share brilliant books with you because they're the ones that really float my boat and it's just a really rollicking wild ride and because the narrator is a kid a really super imaginative kid that's not a predictable or reliable narrator 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 that's just fabulous you know what an imagination how whimsical how childlike it is and the illustrations are just as imaginative and just as wonderful here Marge is zooming in on this one to show us just how adorable this creature is see how the eyes are far apart um, things that represent um, beauty in Western culture are having far apart eyes, little noses, pouty mouths. If you're illustrating children, there's more room up here. You want someone to look younger, you give them a higher forehead and this part is smaller 
here and bigger eyes and so this is just some of the many things that she does. She's also got really sort of whack perspective where things are leaning in and are really askew, things are not realistically colored and all this just adds to the phenomenal charm and delightfulness of this fabulous book. So I just want to say congratulations Dashka on a brilliant book. Congratulations Nicoletta on fabulous illustrations and I hope you pick up a copy just I mean check this out gorgeous so I hope you enjoyed this book as much as I have oh one last thing that I want to share with you part of what makes this book so fantastic is the way that it's written in present tense so she says it's quiet now I hear the fire trucks come back to the station the fighters are getting out and taking off their boots. When they get back to the fire station, they're very dirty from all the ash and they have to take a bath. It's not when they got back to the fire station, they were very dirty and they had to take a bath. It's that immediacy of the present tense. And that's hard to write. It's hard to write it really well. And Dashka did a great job. So, um... Thank you all, and that's it for Mondays with Mira. And next week I hope to show you another postmodern picture book to give you a little more depth with about postmodernism. Um, and if you look back, if you look at the Voices in the Park book, that's definitely postmodernism because there is no one real truth. Uh, in my course, I'm going to be teaching a lot more about postmodernism and picture books and all sorts of other goodies as well. So I hope you'll join me next Monday and I hope you'll join me in my course. Thank you.